moving on to the next session, which is a guest lecture on graceful aging. May I now cordially invite Dr. Shifa Azar and Dr. Mano Harisenaviratna to chair the session. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Shifa Azhar, a specialist in internal medicine. And my co-chair is Dr. Manahari Senevratna, a specialist in internal medicine from NHS Health. I will invite Dr. Manahari to uh, introduce and invite our lecturer. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the lecture will be Graceful Aging. And the speaker will be Dr. Gayane Kanayaka, MS, Fellow of the Sri Lanka College of Surgeons. He's a board certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon and he's attached to the National Hospital of Sri Lanka, Plastic Surgery Service and National Burn Center. Dr. Gayane, over to you. Thank you so much for that uh, introduction. Uh, um, so, uh, embracing graceful aging, uh, which is which is a very interesting topic by itself. And you might wonder why plastic surgeons. Uh, what what do we have in common with uh, uh, in, uh, specialists in internal medicine? Um, I know that you guys uh, look towards a holistic approach to the body, and so so are we. Um, while the 50% of the world population uh, live longer because of you, we try to give them a little bit of uh, youthful appearance uh, to that life. So preserving uh, form is one of our uh, targets. So yeah. Um, so what is aging? And it's, it's a universal uh, feature of life and there's certain um, things like chronological age, where in certain countries everybody's birthday on is falls on um, January first, and some some people, um, so there are some uh, uh, biological aging and uh, societal age, which is um, which is complex at all levels. I'm, I'm, there's no time to discuss uh, the theories behind social theories behind aging. However, when do, when do you become old? That is a that is a question. Now, it's a hard to define because um, this medical progress have actually um, uh, complicated things. But we know uh, it, it's just a perception of yourself as well as a um, perception of others, uh, uh, from others. Now, this age, uh, when do we start thinking that I'm, I'm old? Uh, overall, its average is about 66 years. And uh, well, uh, there's a wide range of course, uh, nationality-wise, uh, the Spanish think up to 74 they're young, and Saudis uh, think after 55 they're old. Um, right, uh, there's another uh, interesting debate on lifespan versus health span. And uh, we know that simple measures like exercise and diet and main, uh, maintaining skin health um, give you a quality life. Now, uh, the, this question is, uh, do you add more life to your years or then add more years to your life? So this, this is the question. Um, so now the world has seen uh, life expectancy increasing uh, in 19 out of 21 regions, I think, except uh, Middle East, I suppose. Um, and uh, there's this NASA twin study which showed that there is uh, this aging can be something that can be manipulated and that can be uh, bio, uh, that can be investigated further. So which is the telomeres, telomeres that have shown some uh, interesting um, um, facts. I'm not going into details of this study. It's a very interesting study. You should read this. Now, advances in medical treatment. I think you, this, make, this might make you uh, in, interested in this uh, topic of cellular sensations. And this is, uh, this is something called cellular aging. Now, 
we know that till you die, the cells divide and younger cells are born every day. Why, then why do we get old? Why do, we cells, why do we have old cells in our body? That is the question. So it is interesting because uh, the, uh, the, there is resistance for apoptosis. When the cell ages, the resist, apoptosis is resisted by the cell. So the apoptosis, apoptosis doesn't happen and the, uh, there's no contact inhibition, so there's no need of uh, dividing new cells. So there's no need of new cells. So the old cells remain. So this is the, uh, this is the new, new concept of uh, uh, having a, a person with older cells rather than younger cells coming up every day. Now, these can be modified, very interesting. This can be modified. There's a lot of research on this called uh, sinotherapeutics. Called, called they are you know, either xenolytics or xenomorphics. I'm not going to talk, talk to you on that because it's, it itself is a huge area and it's coming up re, uh, pretty fast. Now there's AI also is taking part in, as in everything. They, they're trying to find biomarkers of aging using population data. So as far as we know, there are four theories of aging at the moment. So we are anterior, pre -ter radical theory, and program theory of genes and also neuroendocrine theory. But now we think that these, these, the, all these facts may be, uh, may be contributing and it may be uh, promoting each other also. Now when it comes to um, replicative, uh, and, uh, this uh, senescence, they, they, these are few of the uh, interesting areas coming up, replicative senescence, and where telomere, telomere shortening is targeted by certain uh, medicines, and you can also uh, you have uh, evidence of stress-induced premature senescence. That means your cells will age with stress, and there's always also drug-induced senescence also. The drugs can also cause aging. So there are some proposed treatment methods, of course, caloric restriction. We know that for a fact, if you uh, eat less calories and you tend to eat, uh, live longer, and um, also uh, getting nutritional supplements, and the hormonal therapies and stem cell replacements and organ replacement do have its own share for this matter. Okay, now we'll move on to uh, part by part. Of course, that is a holistic approach that I just concluded. I'm just going to go into um, interesting areas now. So aging of hair, which is something that we all face. Every day when we look at the mirror, we think, oh, what has happened to this black thing? And suddenly there's some white long thing. We don't know where it has come from. So uh, it, it, we know that Bella's hair, the, the, the infant's hair, gives, a, gives way to terminal hair, and then it gets uh, replaced again with Bella's, predominantly Bella's hair during uh, uh, elderly period. Now, we know that aging, is, uh, dip, aging depends on the amount of fatty acids on the hair, so it's obviously the fatty acids, if you remove fatty acids, the hair gets older. And there's oxidative stress that is causing pigment loss and accumulation of mutations in the hair bulb causing uh, hair loss. And also melanosome instability is one of the, one of the things that you know, brings a lot of patients to me uh, because they have melasma and hyperpigmentation, they want these things taken off. That is because the melanosome uh, in, uh, inside the hair bulb complex gets uh, in, uh, basically, uh, we call it uh, incontinent, where it cannot, cannot keep the melanin contained, so the melanin leaks out to the skin. Um, yeah, so this is just. So hair aging, what do we see? It's color, dullness, diameter and collapsed hair and brittle hair. So this is itself is a, another conference, but I'm just going to go through uh, what, uh, what, is, what are the just routine causes of hair aging. So hair ironing, bleaching, and coloring. And uh, because it uses ammonia, and the cuticle is lifted off, and hair gets, um, hair gets damaged. As well as these, all these procedures uh, create lots of stress on the hair bulb, and this is not helping. And it promotes uh, more and more um, cellular uh, death. So this is what happens in the hair bulb, where the uh, melanosomes um, uh, rapidly 
uh, go, vanishes and also it leaks out and leaves a hair bulb which is without any melanin or melanosomes. Now there's few things still we can do. Um, so grooming habits, careful hair styling, you know, correct choice of shampoo or conditioner and leave-in products are very important. So adequate choice of uh, hair coloring, you need to know what, what is good for you. And there are a few things that you can uh, improve on the hair volume and uh, the color. So pigmentation, what are, the, what are the newer interventions that are coming up very soon? So this, um, it's interesting that the leading, um, leading contender is tea leaves. So it, it reduces the oxidative stress and a lot of, now there are the people have actually, the Europeans have taken patent on tea leaves, which is, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous, but I you know that's, that's what uh, the, the market, uh, uh, market calls for. But in the fair, on, to be fair on the person, he has actually got interested that we, uh, we drink every day, something that we drink every day and he wants to use it on the hair also. So yeah. Um, so there, this uh, synthetic uh, uh, melanin, melanin dyes are coming uh, quickly, and they are they are thought to be more um, uh, more uh, uh, friendly to the hair bulbs, and also it will be less stress on the hair. Now, the hair volume and number. Interestingly, this uh, uh, sandalwood, which is which is known to us all, is the only product that uh, that has shown hair growth, uh, it, it promotes hair growth. And uh, the um, it's sandalwood smell is the one that is that is causing this one. You don't think it's, it's, it's a sandalwood, you don't have to put sandalwood on your hair. It's a sandalwood smell. Because we, as far as the uh, hair is concerned, the hair has uh, smell receptors. Hair has smell receptors, so surprising. Um, so, um, you know, the cat smell with their viscous, so, we, so are we. Um, so, yeah, uh, and uh, platelet rich plasma, of course, platelet rich plasma. If you come to us, we just uh, put, take some blood and take the plasma out of it and just put it back on your scalp. So you, it gives you more volume and it promotes anagen uh, and, and it's, uh, it reduces catagen. Okay, uh, there are some hormonal, like growth hormone, have uh, um, shown some uh, treatment as, less, as well as uh, the. Uh, uh, um, uh, some of the uh, newer treatments. I think it's a huge area to discuss. And especially uh, fenesteride has shown remarkable uh, um, use, use even in females. So fenesteride is another product that is coming very fast. Moving on to nails, which is one of the key areas that, you know, key things that you, you, know, you feel that, you know, every day, you, you see it and you trim it and there are some uh, age-related things on that uh, contour thickness and those uh, changes. So these are the nail changes that uh, we see, brittle nail syndrome uh, and um, this, uh, uh, the nail thickening and uh, nail curvature and also fungal infections, paronychias and also uh, the uh, ingrown, ingrowing, tone, ingrowing nails. Of course, malignancies are those things are quite rare, but cannot be missed because in elderly, you can in Sri Lanka, you can I've seen several melanomas uh, springing up under the nail beds. Now, the interventions, of course, this is too long. I'm not going to dwell there, but there are so many. Uh, but you need to diagnose these things when you see a patient. If since you are the people who are holy, uh, you know, people who are looking at the entire person, not take piece uh, a piece of the patient and ex 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 examine. I think uh, having a look at these things one one day will just change their lives sometimes you know it's, it's that ingrowing toenail that bothers this patient so much um, you just need to ask uh, what are the other things that you know just any problems there with aging these are very important things to look after of course food problems are also common you get corns callosities callus bunion fungal infections pigmental lesions take a look at the feet and these can be corrected pretty easily. And uh, you know, your friendly neighborhood uh, uh, plastic surgeon will always be happy to jump in and do something about it. Right now, this this makes me very very um, uh, uh, enthusiastic. I mean, this um, uh, this is an important area, which is aging of teeth, which I think as a plastic surgeon is one of the hallmarks of aging. Your 
teeth is very important. We, 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 I wish that I was told when I was young to look after my teeth better than. Um, because oral health is closely related to well-being, general well-being. And uh, it's, it's far more uh, connected to your facial appearance also. You will, not, uh, you will not notice these things because if you lose teeth, your facial height drop and uh, with your poor mastication, uh, efforts of mastication, your mineralization of the facial skeleton drops. So you don't need uh, strong bones because you don't, you don't chew anymore. So there's uh, the problem of uh, the facial bone getting, facial skeleton getting resorbed is an enormous problem for us because you get sagging of face and you know, you get all the eye bags and uh, the, uh, the jaw lines dropping. I'll talk to you in that little, little while. So enamels become hard and they become fracture, uh, fracture prone. Dentine also, uh, dentine by the way, it becomes resistant but uh, cracks are very common. And cementum causes, uh, uh, the gingival recession is one of the most uh, dreaded things. You get uh, uh, root, root caries. And um, uh, of course, uh, then the pulp issues, the pulp vascularity reduces with the age. Now, what can we do? Uh, actually, the uh, hydration of the mouth is very important. You take, drink a lot of fluid and bacteria build up and gingivitis prevention. Those are the three main important things that you can do for teeth. Now, rest of the things, so you know that uh, the facial skeleton, I've just talked to you on this. Um, I'm not going to, so the facial skeleton uh, gets resorbed and the face drops. And these are the things that you uh, see on the face. And these are the uh, lines that you see there. Every line has a name on it. And um, I'm just going to uh, uh, go quickly because time is running up. So I'm uh, just going to show you what can be done quickly. Uh, this, sometimes this uh, surgery is, the, I'm just giving you an extreme example where this neck lift and face lifts can give you some um, appearance. You just uh, bring the time, uh, uh, about five years, ten years. You, do, you ask the patient how young you want to look. Uh, we, are, we are not going to give 15 years younger so we, when you go home your husband doesn't recognize you. That doesn't happen. Uh, but it, it just, uh, we have to tell them that it gets, you, you start getting, uh, you know, age, you, you will age again from uh, that point onward. You will not keep that uh, shape in another two years' time. So these are the things that we do for interventions on the face, commonest things, face lifts, neck lifts, and blepharoplasties. Now, fat grafting is an interesting area where we inject fat, to take, take from belly and inject into these folds. We thought it, was, uh, it, it started as a, you know, good to do things, but we know that they've been, these, these uh, fat compartments get resolved very quickly and these need to be uh, rejuvenated with uh, uh, fat. So you get some, um, the, um, the hollows between the muscles will be filled. And it it's also promotes a lot of uh, growth factors as well as it promotes uh, the muscle well-being also. Now in muscles when they age, you get platysma, common things are the platysma bands and the hypertrophy of facial muscles, you get wrinkles because of that reason. So that's where the neurotoxins come in and we, we will uh, treat all these uh, with neurotoxins uh, to get rid of the wrinkles. Yeah, these are the uh, interventions that we do for these things. Of course the eye has other things happening. The brow drops because of the bone resorption and uh, you can lift the brow, you can um, lids, you can resect some of the lids and pterygium of course it's not, we don't do it, it's uh, eye surgeons do it. Uh, the brow lifts and under eye bags because this is due to our, uh, the facial skeleton getting resorbed and the uh, facial uh, eye orbital septum becomes weak and the fat inside the globe just jumps out. This, now you know what happens, why we get eye bags. Of course the dullness and the, uh, the uh, combination of skin, excess skin and also the wrinkling of skin as well as uh, the pigmentation. So the chemical treatment where the chemical peelings and uh, other chemical treatments and combined treatments are also available for this. Ear can age, ears can age. Well, the easiest thing is the lobule reduction where the lobule looks very sad and hanging. You can just trim it. Uh, of course, the breast also drops. And um, just, it's, a, it's another surgery, of course. Uh, these are uh, mastopexies that we tend to do. Abnormal sagging, 
Parambilical hernias, divertication, and fungal infections, these are treated with um, sometimes a liposuction or lipoabdominoplasty or simple abdominoplasty or wall, abdominal wall reductions. Now, anti-aging hormones uh, and medical treatment, so these are also um, uh, having a go at it. Uh, so, for the good quality of sleep has shown a lot of benefit and also uh, uh, tissue-specific stem cells. Vessels do age. We tend to put some fat in between uh, vessels so the aging is less. I'm just going to quickly finish. The aging of nerves, this is one thing area that one area that you need to know that sometimes the neuropathy can be treated with because the nerves still grow till the day you die. So you just need to get rid of the, uh, the compartment and open the nerves and they just grow. The, the, in, even in diabetes now, there's a lot of research going on to restore their sensation using uh, neuro, neurolysis. Uh, I'm just going to skip this. Of course, bones, I'm, not, I'm sure that you guys know more, more about bones, osteoporosis. I'm not going to dwell on that. Thank you very much. I think my time is up. Thank you, Gayan, for the interesting and fascinating lecture. Due to time constraints, uh, questions are not allowed, I believe. So we will invite him to obtain the certificate as a token of appreciation. Thank you very much.